Okay, here we are. That one successfully went through. So now I'm going to keep using Zoom um, to record the rest of the videos. I don't think on your end it's going to look any different than the way it did before. Um, I did notice that when I used Zoom that the volume was super high on my end. I don't know if that was just the player that I was using or my volume setting. Um, but just double check that you might have to adjust your volume um, versus the previous videos. Um, the volume level might need to be uh, modified. Okay, so for to continue the, the, the review, we're here at number eight. Now we're gonna start getting into solving logarithmic problems. Um, so again, I use the same thing as before. I like to use the inverse operations just because you're already used to that, right? If you have x plus one, you already know to undo the plus one, you minus one. You already know that if you have an x squared, to undo that, you need the square root, which is the inverse of a square. Um, so I just keep that same notation with applying the inverses to help you solve. So if you have log base x, if you want to get rid of log base x, you're going to need to use the exponential base x, which means you're going to have x raised to the left hand side and then x raised to the right hand side. Then exponential logarithmic, it all goes away and you have 81 equal to x to the negative 4. Now, you could sit here and try to figure out what that value has to be, or you can remember that a negative exponent is one over the positive version of that exponent. And then if I cross multiply, right, cross multiply, I get 81 x to the fourth equals one. And then if I divide by 81, And then in order for me to solve for x to the fourth, I would have to take the fourth root on both sides. Now, whenever you take an even root, like two, four, six, you do have to have a plus or minus. And I know the fourth root of that, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the calculator. So remember, your calculator doesn't do it um, all together. It will do it one at a time. So let's see, um, I'm gonna leave the plus or minus. And then I'm going to have the fourth root of 1 divided by the fourth root of 81. And let's see what we get. We get 1 third. That's nice. Okay, so 1 third. So we got two values. We got 1 third and we got negative 1 third, right? However, your base can never be negative or zero. And so I can't have this as my base. So the only answer I could possibly have is one third. Now here, the same thing. Um, if I want to get rid of the log, I have to use this base. So this base, and then the left side becomes an exponent, and then that base and the right side becomes the exponent, because you are applying an exponential of base five to both sides. So this becomes an exponent and that becomes an exponent. And then similarly, the logs are gonna cancel. I'm just gonna have x equal to five squared. Well, that's nice, it's just 25. And if I plug that back in here, the argument would be a positive 25, which is good. As long as it's not zero or negative, it is a good argument. So the answer here is just going to be 25. Now here, Notice that x is already solved for, so I don't need to do anything further. What I do need to do is to be able to type that in the calculator, I have to change the base. I can't do log base five in my calculator. So I'm gonna do ln of the argument over ln of the base. And this I can type in the calculator. So ln of the fourth root of 125 and get out from underneath there and close that for the ln. And then that should be over ln of five. And it tells me that the answer is three fourths. And since x is not an argument and not an exponent, three fourths are not an argument and not a base, three fourths is perfectly fine. Okay, <clears throat> we're finally getting somewhere with this um, review. 
Now for numbers 11, for number 11, it says, use the properties of logarithms to rewrite the expression, simplify as much as possible. So when it's all one log and they want you to simplify it, just look at your choices. They've expanded it, right? So remember, the properties say that if you want to separate this, you have to do the top um, argument minus log with the same base of the bottom. And then notice that they don't have 9y, right? So it's separated even further. So when you have a product here, that product can be separated. And I would use brackets just to be careful um, because it may affect things. In this case, I don't think it will, but it could in other problems. So log base two of nine plus, when it's a product, you use plus. When it's a quotient, you use difference. Um, log base 2 of y. Now, if these guys had exponents on them, I would have to take whatever exponent that was and put it in front of that corresponding log. So if this guy had an exponent, I would have to put that exponent there. If this guy had an exponent, I would have to put it there behind the minus, okay? Just keep that in mind because you could or could not have exponents on the test itself. So here, I don't have a coefficient here and I don't have an exponent, so I don't really need that bracket. And now that should be my final answer. So I've got plus, no, plus and minus. That one seems like the one that's gonna be. Okay. Now, number 12 wants me to write this as a single logarithm. Okay, so they want me to put it together. So go left to right. So I'm gonna put those two together and because it's a plus, that means I'm gonna keep my base the same and I'm gonna multiply the arguments. And then because this is a minus, I'm going to actually divide those arguments. So this argument divided by this argument. And that actually matches this one here. Now notice that this one didn't have any numbers in front because if it does have a number in front, you have to carry those up into the exponents, right? There is a number behind this minus sign, it would become this guy's exponents. So because of that, I did wanna do an extra problem. Um, I wanted to do this problem here. So it says use the properties of logarithms to rewrite the expression. So notice that I do have a number up here, so I'm gonna put it there, and I do have a number here, so I'm gonna put it there. So this would be log base b of x minus log base b of y squared now, plus log base b of z cubed. And then again, go left to right. So these two together, if it's a minus, that means I'm gonna take the first argument divided by the second argument. and then keep this one there. And then because this is a plus, I'm actually gonna multiply those arguments together times z cubed. And so if you think of the z cubed as a whole number, right, like over one, when you simplify that, you'll end up with x z cubed over y squared. And that should be similar to something you'll find in the choices, right? Okay. So um, let's go ahead and keep going. So now we've got some problems where they want us to use the calculator. So it just wants us to evaluate this. That's nice. I can do that. Type ln of 0 0.0159. Would help if my calculator was on. And round to four decimal places. So one, two, three, four. The three is not going to affect the four. So we get negative 4.1414. Nice. Now here it says find an appropriate irrational solution to this equation. So um, I'm going to do the same thing again where I'm trying to get rid of the base. So I'm gonna do log base three on both sides. 
And over here, this will cancel and I just have X equal to this. That can be typed in my calculator, but I have to change the base. So ln of the argument over ln of the base. And then if I type that in here, ln of the argument over ln of the base, we end up with this number and it says round to four decimal places. So the four is not gonna affect the two. So I get 1.7712. Now, number five is very similar to the previous one. The only difference is that the base is a fraction, but it doesn't matter. If I wanna get rid of the exponential, I'm gonna apply the same base with the logarithm. So log of one half on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left, and then log of one half on the right. Now here, these cancel, leaving me with X. And I can type this in my calculator by converting it to ln of the argument over ln of the base. And so we get ln of 10 over ln of 1 half. And round to um, negative, round to near thousands. So tenths, hundredths, the nine is gonna change that to a two. Now it is an exponent, so that is perfectly okay to have as an exponent. It's arguments and bases that cannot be zero or negative. They have to be strictly positive. Okay, number 16 says solve the exponential equation. So again, my base is E, so I'm gonna do log base E, which is ln on both sides. Here, these will cancel. I'll get x squared equal to ln. And in order for me to solve a square, I have to take the square root. But remember, when you take a square root, you get plus or minus. So let's do the positive version. And it says round to the nearest thousands. Oops, I need ln of 75. So I get 2.078. And then negative 2.078. Now, these guys are exponents, and you can have negative exponents. You just cannot have um, no, or what is it, bases have to be positive, and um, arguments have to be positive. Okay? Exponents can be whatever they want to be but your bases and your arguments are the guys that you have to make sure are positive. And since X is not a base and not an argument, it's an exponent, both of these answers are actually correct. So in the box, you would be typing in both. Now let's work on this one. So this one says to solve this. Now I do see the exponential part. It's right here. But in order for me to do log base two on both sides, I'm gonna have to get that exponential part by itself. So I'm going to actually minus two on both sides first. And I get 102. And then I gotta divide by the coefficient here. So I get two raised to the x minus one equal to 34. Now I can do the log base two on the left side of the equation, and then the log base two on the right side of the equation. Here these will cancel. I'll have x minus one equal to this expression. And then if I add one to both sides, I get that x equals this expression, which can be typed in the calculator, but I do need to change the base first. So this would become ln of the argument over ln of the base, and then don't forget the plus one that needs to be there. So ln of 34 over ln of two, and then off to the side, I'm gonna put a plus one. Oops, extra button there. There we go. I get um, six point, it says round to the nearest thousands, so tenths, hundreds, thousands, so zero, eight, seven.
Okay, um, I think we have one more. Oh, we have quite a few more. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and then I'll resume it in the next section.